Now I'm going to talk to you about power. How is power created in this swing? Power is created in this swing by, number one, direct and solid contact. That means we have the club face and the club head traveling toward the target the same direction and hitting the ball in the center of the club face. Any off-center hit will diminish the power to some degree, and any indirect hit will also diminish the power. But let's assume that we're getting club head, the club head moving on the path that it's going and we're hitting the ball in the center of the club face. Then power is purely related to how fast the club head is moving. Now what we need to know is what's moving the club head. What moves the club head are the turning of the body, the movement of the arms, and the unhinging of the wrists. Now with those three power sources, our additional power sources that we can use the torquing of our body to accelerate those three power sources. And the final power source is arc width. With a wide swing arc, we have a wide wheel. With a narrow swing arc, we have a narrow wheel. So we want to strive for the widest possible swing arc, maximize the speed of the turning of the body, the movement of the arms, and the unhinging of the wrists. So we maximize club head speed at the hitting area. I'm going to demonstrate for you the three major power sources and their effect on the golf ball independently of one another so that you can see which ones are more important. Number one, I'm going to use the turning of the body without the wrists or the arms. I'm just going to use the turning of the body. That did create some club head speed. I did hit the ball solid and it went forward. The second part is the hinging of the arm, which is really a combination of the shoulder rotation and the arm unhinging. I'm not going to use the wrist and I'm not going to use the body turn. As you can see, my arms don't have much range of motion independent of my body, so they don't create a lot of the speed. The final source of power is the unhinging of the wrist. We hit a ball without the arms and without the body turn, but just using the wrist. As you can see, the power source there was a little stronger than the other two. We want a combination of all three, the turning forward of the body, the forward movement of the arms, and the unhinging of the wrist. If we can do this with the right transitioning, we're gonna create a loading or catapulting effect both at the hinge at the shoulder, which is the arm movement, and at the hinge at the wrist, which is the wrist movement. And that happens by creating a big shoulder turn on the way back, using the body to initiate the downswing, which creates a loading effect, or a stretching, slight stretching across this lever, and a straight st stretching across this lever, which will create an unloading or a catapulting effect for the club. We call this club head lag. The club head stays back and lags. If we can do this with a maximum arc width, by turning our shoulder, using our body to rotate down, loading both the left arm against the chest and the left thumb or the left wrist, we can create a catapulting effect where the club head will accelerate and maximize the speed through the ball. If I swing harder with my arms, I change the relationship between my arms and my body, and that changes the relationship of the club face to the target. If I increase my turn speed, my body acts like the axle of a wheel and increases the outside speed of the wheel. Also creates, if I turn, change the directions, loads the club a little deeper, both in my shoulder and my arm, and creates a more a greater acceleration of the club head from the catapulting effect. One of the next elements of power is to turn the shoulders and to have a wide arc in your shoulder turn and to have the shoulders turn in an aggressive and rapid fashion. So I'll take this pole and put it across my shoulders, bend over to about a 45 degree tilt and turn my shoulders back on a 45 degree angle. Back and then through on the same angle. So basically what we're doing is we're turning our shoulders level around our spine, which is tilted down. 
So I can do back and through and gradually move farther and farther as I'm stretching my shoulder turn and moving it faster and faster to increase range of motion and speed. And this will be translated into distance by increasing the club head speed as we swing. One other way we can help increase power is to learn how to release the club at the very last second so we maximize the club head speed of the ball. And we use this, uh, use the impact bag to do this. And using the impact bag, we want to start with our wrists only and hinge back and hit the bag. Wrists only, hinge back and hit the bag. And then create a slight lag and snap the club head into the bag. And then we can use our body to turn to accelerate that and maximize the power.